This is the anatomy review for for this section. There's three main things to go over. So the bony pelvis, the viscera, the organs, nerves, artery, veins, uh, the peritoneum, and then finally we'll wrap up um, talking about the perineum. So the bony pelvis, we'll do this part quiz style so because it should be kind of familiar. So what's number one? That's, uh, that's the sacrum. Number two, ilium. What joint connects those? If it's the SI, sacroiliac joint there. How about number three? The ischium. Number four, the pubic bone. Five, pubic symphysis. The place where um, all these three bones together uh, and the femur connects is called the acetabulum. Um, that's number six. And then number seven is the um, obturator foramen. And then finally the coccyx down here at the bottom, number eight. It's good to know um, the bony pelvis in terms of the, the plane of the inlet to the pelvis and the outlet. So the inlet um, is defined by this plane here. And so this sort of bulging area is called the sacral promontory. It's at the very top of the sacrum. And where that meets up with the top of the pubic sy symphysis is the plane of the inlet. And the plane of the outlet is just the coccyx here with the bottom of the pubic symphysis. And this is showing the ischial tuberosities here, making this diameter, and then the, the AP diameter between the pubic symphysis and the coccyx here. So just the, the general layout, um, which I think is fairly familiar, we have the uh, uterus here, fallopian tubes, ovary, utero, ovarian ligament. Well, and something that might be kind of new is where the fallopian tubes and also the round ligaments, which aren't shown, um, connect up with the uterus is called the uterine horn. So that's this area. It's also called the cornu of the uterus. So if you draw a line between, between those and you go above it, that's the fundus of the uterus, which is the top of it, um, whereas below that line is the uh, body of the uterus. And then we have um, the cervix, so inside of here is the endocervical canal, uh, the vagina. And then the blood supply, so I'll just sort of clear that and we'll draw the blood supply. So we have the abdominal aorta coming down. And do you know what level the abdominal aorta divides? It divides at T10, so that's at the belly butt 10. And what it divides into is the common iliacs. The common iliacs uh, comes further down and divides up into an external and an internal. The external uh, goes down to the leg and becomes the femoral after the inguinal ligament. And it also gives off um, the inferior epigastrics, which, which are important in abdo abdominal wall anatomy. The internal is what we're mostly concerned with here. And the internal divides up into an anterior and a posterior division. The posterior really isn't all that important for what we're talking about. But the anterior division of the internal iliac artery is pretty important. Now that gives off the uterine artery. It gives off... Um, vaginal branches. Sometimes the vaginal branches come directly off of the anterior division of the internal iliac and sometimes they come off of the uterine artery. And so that supplies the uh, the blood to the uterus and the cervix and the vagina. Um, the, o the ovaries uh, have a sort of different blood supply. The abdominal aorta comes down and we, and we probably know that the blood supply from to the ovaries comes directly off of the abdominal aorta. Uh, down to the ovaries, the the only thing to point out here is that the on the left side here the venous drainage it goes into the into the left venal vein uh, left renal vein instead of um, directly back into the abdominal aorta. So the, the way to remember that is the left side is just that the heart sort of sticks onto the left, and so things on the left are a little bit funny. Like in the lung, you have the lingula instead of having three sort of normal lobes, and and on the and also down here is a little bit funny, and then it drains into the renal artery instead of draining directly into the um, aorta. So the, the lymphatics um, and embryology kind of go together, so we'll talk about them together. And they actually also, it's also good just to bring the um, blood supply back into it too. So we'll just draw our common iliac here and then our internal and external. And then we have the femoral coming off the external. So em in terms of embryology, where does the uterus and the upper part of the vagina come from? Those are those are malarian structures and they drain to the common iliac nodes up here. The more distal vagina isn't a malarial structure. The distal vagina is part of the urogenital sinus and that drains over to the inguinal, inguinal lymph nodes. And you can imagine where, they, where those nodes are because they're near the inguinal ligament near the femoral artery. So those are over here. And also going back to embryology where the ovaries drain to. So we have the abdominal aorta up here. The, the, the ovaries came from there and descended down and they get their blood supply from there so they also drain up here towards the abdominal aorta so they drain in para-aortic nodes. 
knowing where the, the ureter goes is important. It's also kind of confusing because of the water under the bridge sort of way of remembering it. So here's the common iliac here. So the ureter is coming down from the kidney, and it actually passes above here, the common iliacs, right where they right near where they're dividing into the in internal and external branches. So here the here the um, blood vessel is passing over. So that's not what the water under the bridge is referring to. The water under the bridge is referring to down here where the anterior division of the internal iliac gives off the uter that gives off the um, uterine uh, artery. The ureter comes down and passes underneath that. So that's the that's the water under the bridge. And the blood supply to the ovary um, is coming down here from the abdominal aorta. It's traveling in the a ligament called the infundibular pelvic ligament, or the IP ligament. And the ureter is also also deep to that. Although when people are talking about water under the bridge, what they're talking to is uh, talking about is down here where the ureter uh, passes underneath the uterine artery. So the more along the blood supply line, you can see here the ovarian artery. So that's c coming down in the IP ligament. And that's another name for that, which you, is more common in like years one and two, but not heard when you're on the rotation so much. It's the dispensary ligament of the ovary. Um, that's the same thing as the infundibular pelvic ligament. So that's coming down he down here from you know, the abdominal aorta carrying the, the these blood vessels that, which supply the ovary, uh, but they also give off tubular branches and sort of meet up with the uterine artery here. So this, these blood vessels all kind of meet up, which is important. Um, for example, if you cut this artery or this artery, you have to you have to make sure that you, that you um, that you seal it off because if you if, let's say you cut it here, the blood can still flow from the uterine and then out where you cut, or or vice versa. And so, continuing with the ligaments, we already talked about the IP, so that the infundibular pelvic is the same thing as suspensory ligament the, ligament of the ovary, and it carries the ovarian um, vessels. Another important ligament is the cardinal ligament, so that's coming in here, carrying the uterine artery, the uterosacral sacral ligament. Um, comes here and it meets up with the cardinal ligament forming the uterosacral complex and it sort of travels uh, posterior or inferior down to the ischial spine. This is the round ligament and a good PIM question to know about is what artery goes in the round ligament and that's um, Samson's artery. Other than that, Samson's artery I don't think is too important for anything. But regardless, that's, th that's um, the round ligament there and that's going ultimately, ultimately to the um, this remnant of the gu gubernaculum going to the uh, mons pubis. Uh, the I think the final ligament to mention is just the utero ovarian here, and that's an easy one because of the way it's named. So post in postpartum hemorrhage, sort of a clinical thing to go, it's good to know about is, let's say someone's bleeding and you've tried pitocin, you've tried methogen, and you have to do um, you have to you have to go in and and try to cut off the blood vessels. What you first want to go for obviously would be the uterine artery. That'd be the best thing to cut off. Um, but if you can't if you can't get the uterine artery, or that's not working. Then you can go up and do the internal uh, division of the iliac artery, but you, you can't go back up and cut off uh, blood supply to the entire common iliac because then you'll be cutting off blood supply to basically that whole side of the leg. Um, so that's, if you can't do that, then you'd proceed to doing a hysterectomy. So the, the general layout here, so this is nice because you can see the sagittal view of everything. And you have the peritoneum here outlining the pelvis. It reflects up onto the uterus, covering the entire uterus until it gets to, to about here anteriorly where it reflects up onto the bladder. So this makes your anterior uh, vesico-uterine pouch here. And this, the area where the peritoneum reflects up is called the vesico-uterine fold. And posteriorly we have the pouch of Douglas, um, which separates the uterus um, and the rectum. So it's, seeing this general outline is good because the bladder is here anterior sort of covering up um, part of the uterus, which is why it's important to sort of get the bladder out of the way when, when you're doing procedures like making a bladder flap or using bladder blades to push it out of the way. And then you have the, the rectum here behind. It's also good to see the angle of the uterus here with respect to the um, vaginal opening, how it's not a, it's not like a straight line. It actually makes quite a, quite a big angle, almost, almost a 90 degree angle, angle up there. So the, the, the patch in the back is patch of Douglas. That's, so if you break through the peritoneum in the back, you get to the patch of Douglas, which separates the uterus from the rectum. And then anteriorly, it um, separates the bladder from the uterus. The peritoneum comes together as it, as it flops off the side of the uterus to make the, the broad ligament extending out laterally to the to the side wall. So the so the broad ligament um, shown here, and this is all broad ligament, and you can divide it up into to different parts. So the mesometrium is the the part here, referring to the part um over by the uterus and on the uterus. The mesosalpinx is the part by the tube. 
so that's here, and then the mesovarium is the part over by the ovary. Looking at the fallopian tube, it's good to go over the different parts. So the sort of finger-like part that's most um, sort of distal along the tube, distal from the uterus along the tube, uh, is called the fimbria. And the next part is called the infundibulum, and then finally the ampulla, the isthmus, and then the interstitial part where it, where it enters into the uterus. And when you're looking inside of the uterus, for example, doing like a hysteroscopic procedure, the opening to the fallopian tube is called an, an ostia. And so what's the most common place for um, atopic pregnancies? That's in, the, that's in the ampulla, ampulla of the fallopian tube. So now to look at some to a real life picture. So if you're going in for a procedure like this is a, a good view of what, of what you'll see if you're doing something laparoscopically. So the abdomen's insufflated and you kind of have some room to look around. So what's looking at you here is the uterus. And then the first thing that you can easily identify is the ovaries because they're bright white. And they're sort of the only thing that color. So even even if they kind of look strange to you, if it's if it's bright white and it's kind of in that location, then it's probably the ovary. Then you can see the the tubes here. And remember that the, the fallopian tubes there, remember that the round ligaments sort of insert on the uterus at the horn of the uterus at the corner of the, of the uterus and they insert near the fallopian tube. So th these are the rounds coming in there. Down here this is this is possibly the utero ovarian down there. So that's what you'll see when you're doing a laparoscopic operation and usually you'll be asked to identify something and it's, it'll probably be the round ligament because it's one of the first things that you do in procedures like hysterectomy and things, you cut the round ligament first. So again, another picture. So this is the, the cervix. The blood supply from the cervix comes from the uterine artery. And it usually travels along this area. So 3 and 9 o'clock is where the blood supply to the cervix comes in. So you want to try to avoid disrupting that area as much as you can. And the cervix is supplied by the autonomic nervous system. So you can have vasovagal reactions. So the parasympathetic tone can increase simultaneously the sympathetic tone decreasing. and people's blood pressure could drop and they can actually pass out by, by manipulating the cervix. And then the other thing is the in the endocervical canal you have the squamoclumnar junction which is r real important in uh, cervical cancer. So looking at the, this, this picture is looking at the anterior abdom abdominal wall from the inside out and looking at looking at things from this angle is important when you're doing a laparoscopic operations because you get the camera in first and then you sort of look back and figure out where you are before you put in secondary trocars. So it's good to know some of these um, these these folds in the in the fascia here. So this middle one, what's what's that called? The median ligament, and that's the remnant from embryology of the uracus, and that's the connection between the the bladder and the belly button from like the peds type questions where you have a kid who um, is maybe leaking some urine out of their belly button, that'd be like a patent urachus. So that should close down and make the median ligament. Then lateral to that you have a paired set here, and so those are the medial ending with an L um, ligaments. <coughs> and so what do those come from embryologically? They come from the umbilical arteries, so you should see those there. And then you have the inferior epigastric vessels, and then this fold here, which is kind of hard uh, to see, is the lateral folds. So the, knowing, knowing where the inferior epigastrics are, are, are is important because you don't want to damage them. And a good way to know that you're not going to hit them is if you see the round ligament here going into the deep ring of the inguinal canal. If you go over lateral to that, then you know that you're not going to uh, hit the inferior epigastrics. So knowing about the perineum uh, is, is important because of lacerations during childbirth especially. Knowing something about the anatomy here is, is pretty helpful with that. So first of all, defining what the perineum is. So you have the the pelvic diaphragm and that makes the floor of the pelvis and there's two muscles that are important there and so the, one of them is the levator, levator a9 here and the other one's the coccygeus. So that's the floor, that's the pelvic diaphragm or the floor of the pelvis but then inferior to that you have uh, so it's called the perineum and then the the, the other sort of ba boundaries that define where that is, is, you look over here at these ischial tuberosities and then you can draw a line through them. You can go up to the pubic symphysis, circle that, go down to the coccyx, circle that, and then you can make two triangles. So you can make a urogenital triangle up here and you can make um, an anogenital triangle down here. 
So that's that's the gives sort of the medial, lateral, anterior, posterior definition of the perineum. And there's two muscles that are that are important for you to know about in the peritoneum. There's there's multiple muscles and there's they're sort of organized into superficial and deep pouches, but really the only two important ones are the bulbal spongiosis here, running like this along the sides of the vaginal opening, and then the transverse perineal muscles here coming in from the sides. So now the blood supply of the perineum. So the perineum gets its blood from the pudendal artery. Do you know where the pudendal artery comes from? The pudendal artery is another branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac. So we'll draw our iliacs. We have them divided up into external and internal anterior division. So the anterior division is real important. It gave off the uterine, it gave off the vaginal, supplied blood to the cervix. And then when it terminates, it terminates as the pudendal. And so this, are, this is the one that leaves the greater sciatic for, foramen, comes back through the lesser sciatic foramen, and then it uh, travels in, over into the perineum and it gives off um, inferior rectal branches, it gives off blood supply to the muscles here, it gives off branches to the uh, clitoris. So this is the most important nerve, this, uh, most important blood blood vessel in this area. The pudendal nerve is also um, the most important nerve. And so the pudendal nerve travels along the same uh, course as the artery out of the greater sciatic frame and into the uh, lesser sciatic frame and uh, so provides the innervation of this area. Knowing about that is can be come up clinically and when you do a pudendal nerve block. So that's people can get, if someone's having a lot of pain in this area, or you otherwise need to block that nerve, what you can do is you can use uh, CT guidance to find a, a bony structure. So that's the ischial spines here. And then you can use that um, to block the pedendal nerve. Um, yeah, so then, and just this, this picture is important in, in lacerations, which we'll, which we'll see in just a sec here. So, the laceration anatomy, just to, because this is a homemade picture, so we'll just talk, tell you what it is. So this is the opening of the vagina here, vaginal mucosa surrounding it. The two important muscles in the perineum, so what are, what are those two? You have bulbal spongiosis, that's coming off the side, bul uh, the bulbal spongiosis is off the other side. Then you have the transverse perineal coming in from the sides here. Then you have the external anal sphincter, internal anal, anal sphincter, and then the, the anus here. So when someone has a laceration, they're basically ripping apart, starting here, going down. And so what um, they rip through is used to grade how bad the, the, the laceration is. So you can have anything from a, there's four different grades, grades one up until grade four. And you can, can people can completely tear all the way from the vagina all the way um, into the anus. And then there'll, there'll be a separate talk on that if you're going to be doing uh, laceration repairs. So that is the summary of the anatomy that's um, important for sort of the rest of the, these OBGYN type talks.